today I will show you how to knit floatless fair isle slippers like these ones. I learned to knit them with the help of Margarita Fisher and I will put several links with some additional information in the description. For these slippers I will use punch card 19. First make sure the racking handle is in its highest position. Now raise 36 needles on the front bed of the machine, 18 to the left and 18 to the right of the center. Place the edge springs on the last working needles, then raise the opposite 36 needles on the back bed and place the edge springs on the last working ones. It should look like this. Now use the orange ruler and arrange the needles in one to one division on both beds of the machine. Then move the edge springs on the last working needles. The needles must be arranged contrary to the needle rule. Set both locks to CX and the stitch size to 1. Insert the black strippers and take the first color yarn. Now knit two rows. Raise the non-working needles on both beds and move the edge springs on the last working ones. Then tap on the needles to tighten the yarn. Increase the stitch size to 4 on both locks. Now knit two rows. Don't forget to tap on the needles to tighten the yarn. Clear the row counter and increase the stitch size to 5 on both locks. Now knit 20 rows. Tap on the needles when knitting the first few rows. Don't forget to support me by liking the video. Clear the row counter, then set the front lock to HX and press both arrow keys. Move the lock to the color changer and take the second color yarn. On the front bed, raise pushers on their own needles in working position. Now attach the card reader in the center of the machine. Press the black lever and insert the punch card until you hear a click. Then press and hold the black lever and feed the card forward until you can connect it into a loop. Finally, continue feeding the card until you can see zero in the viewfinder. Push the trip cam for the row counter to the left as far as it can go. Then slide the deco device to the right, attach it to the front lock and set it to 4. Now you need to knit 100 rows but you have to change the color on every 4th row. Don't reset the row counter but just change the yarn color. Knit 4 more rows. Now change the color again and continue knitting. Clear the row counter, detach the deco device and slide it to the left but leave it set to 4. Set the front lock to GX and press the zero key to disengage the arrow keys, then set the back lock to BX. I knitted the last row with the second color yarn. I will change the colors to knit the heel with the first color yarn and then I have to use the first color to continue the pattern. 
To make the heel, first raise pushers and draw working needles on the back bed and put them in working position. Now you can drop the front bed and attach weights to the knitting. Move the edge springs and transfer the pearl bumps from the end needles on the front bed to the end needles on the back bed. This will prevent small holes from forming. Now put the leftmost pusher in resting position and knit one row. Move the edge spring and wind the yarn around the non-working needle. Then put one pusher in resting position on the right side and knit one row. In the description I will leave links for two videos about making heels so you may check them. In my case I have to knit short rows until there are 12 pushers in working position in the center. When you knit the heel, clear the row counter, set the front lock to HX and press both arrow keys. Then set the back lock to CX. Make sure you have the eyelet with the first color yarn in the jaws of the lock and knit 220 rows. Stop after knitting the first row and attach the deco device back to the front lock. Then continue knitting the pattern. You need to change the colors on every fourth row. Clear the row counter, set the front lock to CX, press the zero key to disengage the arrow keys and detach the deco device. Make sure you have the eyelet with the first color yarn in the jaws of the lock. You can put all pushers in resting or out of working position. Move the edge springs to the sides. At each end on each bed take the two end stitches and move them one needle in. Then put the empty needles out of working position. Knit 4 rows and repeat these steps until the row counter is at row count 24. Now you have to continue making decreases the same way but you need to knit only 2 rows after transferring the stitches. You have to repeat these steps until the row counter is at 44 rows or until you have 4 stitches on each bed. At this point you can cut both yarn tails and retread the machine. Remove the weights then thread the yarn tail into the double eye bodkin tool and sew off the remaining stitches in a circular manner. Start by taking all stitches on the front bed from right to left then take all stitches on the back bed from left to right. When you sew off all stitches the slipper will fall off the machine. This is the slipper right after you take it from the machine. You only need to hide the yarn tails. That's the final result. Tell me do you like these slippers? This is the wrong side. There are no floats which is amazing. Thank you for watching, have a nice day and see you in my next video.